Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamid Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa addressed the 18th consultative meeting of the GCC Supreme Council and the GCC Central Asia Summit held yesterday at the King Abdullah International Conference Center in Jeddah. The summits were chaired by the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, with the participation of the heads of the delegations of GCC and Central Asia countries. In the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful, dear brother, Custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, Chairman of the Summit. My brother, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud, Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Your Majesties, Highnesses and Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, may peace, mercy and blessings of Allah be upon you. At the outset, we extend sincere congratulations to all of you on the occasion of the new Hijri year praying to Allah the Almighty for a year of goodness, peace and blessings for the peoples and countries of the Arab and Islamic world on the occasion. We must congratulate the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on the great success of the Hajj season, which was distinguished by the high level of its organization in serving the pilgrims and their keenness to provide all aspects of care and attention for the performance of Hajj rituals in the best way. It is also a pleasure to extend our sincere thanks and appreciation to our brother, the custodian of the two holy mosques, and to His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, Crown Prince and Prime Minister, for the kind invitation and for hosting this blessed gathering between the Gulf Cooperation Council and Central Asian countries, with its ambitious strategic dimensions so that relations between these regional blocs can be launched on a solid base of fraternal rapprochement political understanding, economic integration, knowledge and cultural exchange, and security and defense partnerships to preserve the security and stability of their countries. Given what has been achieved between our countries in terms of the historical and deep-rooted ties and our solid cooperative relations and taken into account areas of development on our path of progress and peace, our meeting today is the culmination of those serious endeavors to bring visions closer and to strengthen the basis of common vital interests to protect our spiritual values and civilizational gains. Further, it is a venue to work collectively and systematically to spread the culture and practices of peace and tolerance, enrich the channels of dialogue among religions and civilizations, and to combat religious, sectarian, and racial hate speech, and to deter hostile terrorist forces by combating their organizations and sources of funding in order to achieve the goal of building a regional community based on peaceful coexistence and mutual trust while preserving the sovereignty of states and their right to long-term development. We all agree that the key to achieving sustainable collective renaissance requires us to take more serious and effective measures to advance comprehensive partnerships that strengthen human solidarity in the face of crises, to strengthen areas of security coordination, to protect and secure freedom of navigation for oil and energy supplies and global trade, and to prohibit weapons of mass destruction. In this context, we underline the importance of linking the outcomes of our strategic dialogue and political coordination with international policies and UN commitments in accordance with international frameworks and mechanisms to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals and their broad fields, focusing on trade and investment exchange in sectors such as energy, health, education, sport, tourism, digital transformation, food and environmental security. Distinguished Delegates Taken into account the collective human and material capabilities of our countries in addition to their long-standing expertise and successful experiences, our consultations establish a strong and ambitious partnership that raises the levels of joint cooperation, initiates peaceful and diplomatic solutions to end wars and conflicts and stop human suffering, and brings closer views on regional and international developments to work together towards a more stable and bright future, as well as accelerating efforts to find a just solution to the Palestinian issue, will remain an urgent priority so as to reach a lasting and comprehensive peace to which we all aspire by delivering the right of the Palestinian people to establish their independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital in accordance with the Arab Peace Initiative based on the two-state solution. In conclusion, we cannot fail to place on record our deep appreciation and pride 
and the exceptional positions and efforts of the brotherly kingdom of Saudi Arabia to achieve all that is necessary on the path of human solidarity and stable relations among the international community, praising the results of those sincere efforts with their positive developments that make the region an inspiring model and a remarkable reality of all that is good, and fulfilling our hopes for the elevation and prosperity of humanity, with our sincere wishes for the kingdom's success and its endeavors to host Expo 2030, God willing. Happy New Year, and may the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah be upon you. On behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, participated in the GCC Central Asia Summit held yesterday at the King Abdullah International Conference Center in Jeddah. The summit was chaired by Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, with the participation of the heads of the delegations of GCC and Central Asian countries. On behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs National Security Advisor, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday participated in the 18th consultative meeting of the GCC Supreme Council in Jeddah. The GCC meeting was chaired by Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Mursa Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, who welcomed His Highness Sheikh Nasser upon his arrival at the King Abdullah International Conference Center.
On behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the dinner banquet hosted by the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister in honor of the heads of delegations participating in the 18th GCC Consultative Summit and the GCC Central Asia Summit. His Highness then bid farewell to His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince as well as GCC leaders and leaders of Asian countries. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and National Security Advisor, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, returned to Bahrain. On behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Nasser chaired the Kingdom's delegation at the 18th consultative meeting of the GCC Supreme Council and the GCC Central Asia Summit, both hosted by Saudi Arabia. Earlier today, His Highness Sheikh Nasser departed Saudi Arabia after taking part in the two key meetings on behalf of His Majesty the King. In the statement of the GCC Central Asia Summit, the participating leaders praised the result of the Bahrain Dialogue Forum East and West for Human Coexistence, which was held in Manama in 2002 under the patronage of His Majesty the King and there was with the participation of the Sheikh of Al-Azhar and the Pope of the Vatican. The statement stipulated the following. In response to the invitation of the Saudi King, the leaders of the GCC and Central Asian countries held their meeting in Jeddah under the chairmanship of His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister with the participation of Their Highnesses and Excellencies leaders of the GCC and Central Asian countries and the GCC Secretary General. The leaders congratulated the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on the success of the Hajj season of 1444 Hijri year. Based on common values, interests, and deep historical ties between GCC countries and the countries of Central Asia, the leaders stressed the importance of strengthening political and strategic relations between the two sides at the collective and bilateral levels. The leaders praised the cultural diversity, openness, and rich history of the GCC and Central Asia countries, and stressed that tolerance and peaceful coexistence are among the most important values and principles for relations between nations and societies. The leaders welcomed the adoption of Security Council Resolution 2686. They expressed concern about the growing rhetoric of racism and Islamophobia and acts of violence against Muslim minorities and Islamic symbols. The leaders also heard the results and goals of the Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religious in discussing global guidelines for achieving respect and tolerance among races and religions. The leaders commended the outcomes of the Bahrain Dialogue Forum, East and West for Human Coexistence, held under the patronage of His Majesty the King in cooperation with the Sheikh Al-Azhar and the Pope of the Vatican. The leaders stressed the importance of strengthening strategic and political dialogue between GCC countries and Central Asian countries in accordance with the agreed-upon Joint Action Plan 2023-2027. The leaders highlighted the outcomes of the joint ministerial meeting of the strategic dialogue between the Cooperation Council and countries of Central Asia, urging relevant authorities to take the necessary measures for the immediate implementation of the joint action plan at the bilateral and multilateral levels. The leaders stressed the importance of continuing efforts to enhance commercial and economic cooperation and encourage joint investment. They also called for achieving integration between available opportunities, developing investment fields, discussing development priorities, and exchanging experiences in light of the joint action plan. The leaders affirmed their support for the candidacy of Saudi Arabia to host Expo 2030 in Riyadh, and exerting all efforts to support it, stressing the importance of organizing international and regional exhibitions and active participation in them to stimulate economic and cultural exchange between Central Asia and the Gulf region. The leaders emphasized the importance of continuing cooperation between GCC, Central Asia and international forums and organizations to confront the economic challenges facing the world. The leaders praised the two sides' leading role in confronting climate change and renewed their support to the UAE for hosting COP28 to support international efforts in this regard.
As developing countries, the leaders emphasize the principles and provisions of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and the Paris Agreement. The leaders stress the importance of strengthening cooperation in the field of environment and climate change, protecting glaciers and water resources, and attracting further investments to the main sectors of the economies of Central Asian countries. The leaders stress the importance of developing connected transportation routes between the two regions, building strong logistical and commercial networks, and developing effective systems that contribute to the exchange of products. The leaders agreed to enhance cooperation in the fields of higher education, scientific research and vocational training, encourage cooperation between universities and scientific research centers on both sides, and provide educational opportunities in technical universities for students from the GCC and Central Asian countries, as well as exchange expertise and experiences through communication between experts and education specialists. The leaders expressed their aspiration to enhance cooperation in the health field, exchange experiences between specialized institutions in various health fields, and support global initiatives to address current and future epidemics, health risks, and challenges. The leaders noted the importance of preserving common cultural heritage between the two sides, enhancing joint cultural and media cooperation, encouraging cultural dialogue, and discussing opportunities to develop cooperation in all relevant fields. The leaders stressed the importance of strengthening cooperation in the field of youth and sports, exchanging experiences, and coordinating electoral positions related to regional, continental, and international sports federations, highlighting Qatar's hosting of the 2023 AFC Asian Cup. The leaders emphasized strengthening cooperation in the field of green economy energy, digital economy and innovation, and green technology. They stressed the need for investments to implement new projects. They also welcomed Saudi Arabia's decision to host the investment forum between GCC countries and Central Asian countries. The leaders discussed regional and international issues where they agreed on the importance of concerted efforts to achieve peace, security, stability and prosperity in all parts of the world and their priority for restoring international peace and security. They affirmed that the increasing risks of nuclear confrontation between nuclear armed states constitute a serious and unacceptable threat to international peace and security. The leaders expressed their condemnation of terrorism, the rejection of all its forms and manifestations, and cutting its funding sources. They expressed their determination to strengthen regional and international efforts to combat terrorism and extremism, and to prevent the financing, arming, and recruitment of terrorist groups for all individuals and entities. They emphasize that tolerance and coexistence among nations and peoples are among the most important principles and values upon which relations between states and societies are based. The leaders stressed the importance of strengthening cooperation between the Organization of Islamic Cooperation and its institutions and bodies, stressing that parts of the Islamic world are facing increasing food insecurity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued a circular on the occasion of the Ashura holiday. The Kingdom's ministries and public institutions will be closed on Friday and Saturday the 28th and 29th of July. The circular also stipulated that as Friday and Saturday coincide with two official public holidays, Sunday and Monday will be given in lieu. Under the patronage of the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the second Bahrain Awards Ceremony was held for CEOs in the public and private sectors who support artificial intelligence and future sciences. The ceremony was attended by the Minister of Social Development, Hussam Al Asfour, and a number of officials and CEOs. During the ceremony, the best 14 CEOs in Bahrain were honored who have provided support and innovation in the field of AI and modern technologies. The ceremony included discussion sessions related to the field of AI and digital transformation and was organized by the International Group of Artificial Intelligence and the UAE GIC Media in partnership with the Nasser Artificial Intelligence Research and Development Center. The chairman of the organizing committee of the conference and chairman of International Group of AI, Dr. Jasim Haji, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for sponsoring the ceremony and supporting innovation and the use of AI. He added that His Highness is considered one of the first personalities to contribute to establishing initiatives in the field of artificial intelligence in the Arabian Gulf.
The Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Lim Salem praised the speech of His Majesty the King at the 18th consultative meeting of the GCC Supreme Council and the GCC Central Asia Summit. He stressed that strengthening strategic cooperation between GCC countries and Central Asian countries will contribute to the security and prosperity of the region. He referred to His Majesty's emphasis on the importance of linking the outcomes of the strategic dialogue and political coordination in line with the international policies and commitments which will achieve the aspirations of countries and peoples. He affirmed the parliamentary support for the firm Bahraini position regarding the acceleration of finding a just solution to the Palestinian issue. He appreciated the role of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the Saudi king in benefiting the countries and peoples of the region. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, expressed his pride in the comprehensive strategic approach of the Kingdom of Bahrain and building strengthening and consolidating partnerships with brotherly and friendly countries. He praised the contents of the speech delivered by His Majesty the King to the 18th consultative meeting of the GCC Supreme Council Summit with Central Asian countries. The chairman pointed out that the kingdom will continue its noble endeavors under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the efforts of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He noted the relentless efforts made by Saudi Arabia led by Saudi King to bridge ties and build relations between brotherly and friendly countries. Within the framework of the Ministry of Interior's keenness in securing the Ashura season and in strengthening the strategy of community partnership and constructive communication with all societal activities, the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah al-Khalifa received the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Ja'far Waqf, members of the Hsaini Processions Authority, heads and officials of Ma'tam and the Governorates of Bahrain. The Minister then delivered the following speech on the occasion. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبيه الكريم سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين حضور الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يطيب لي بداية أن أتوجه لكم جميعا بالشكر على تلبية الدعوة لحضور هذا اللقاء الذي يمثل نهج أهل البحرين في التواصل ويساهم في تعزيز وحدتنا الوطنية ويؤكد على أهمية العمل بين أبناء الوطن الواحد كما يسعدني أن نبارك لكم حلول السنة الهجرية الجديدة جعلها المولى عز وجل سنة خير وبركة على المسلمين أجمعين وأود في مستهل كلمتي أن أنقل لكم تحيات سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه وتمنيات صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله للجميع بدوام التوفيق والنجاح لما فيه الخير لوطننا الغالي حضور الكريم إني سعيد اليوم بالالتقاء بكم جميعا وهي مناسبة طيبة لأؤكد فيها على أن الالتقاء بين الناس فرصة لتبادل التحية والتقاء الخواطر وتعزيز مشاعر التقارب والطمأنينة وسد الطريق على من يحاول شق الصف بين الناس فأهلا بكم سائلا الله العلي القدير أن يجمعنا دوما على الخير والصلاة الإخوة الحضور أجدها فرصة طيبة بحضور هذا الجمع المسؤول ليعرض لكم عن شكري وتقديري على ما لمسناه من التزام وتعاون وانضباط ساهم في نجاح موسم عاشوراء العام الماضي الأمر الذي يؤكد على السمة المتميزة من الوعي المجتمعي والمسؤولية الوطنية من قبل الجميع كما انتهز هذا اللقاء ليطلعكم على توجه الوزارة في معالجة بعض الظواهر الأمنية الاجتماعية والذي يتطلب مشاركتنا ومساهمتنا جميعا كل في موقع حيث أنه بفضل وتوفيق من الله 
ثم الجهود الوطنية المخلصة من قبل الجميع فإننا نعمل على احتواء انتشار ظاهرة المخدرات في المجتمع ولكني أتطلع إلى المزيد من المشاركة والحضور الوطني المسؤول في مواجهة هذه الآفة من خلال غرس القناعة الإيجابية في مختلف فئات المجتمع مؤكدا على أنني لن أدخر جهدا في سبيل محاربة ما يمكن أن يؤثر على مستقبل أمن شبابنا وعطائنا الوطن وفي هذا السياق فإن هذا الأمر يدفعني للحديث عن أهمية التمسك بالقيم والأخلاق الحميدة ونبذ الكراهية والعمل على تهيئة الأجواء الآمنة والمحبة والتآخي بين الناس خصوصا وأننا نعيش في بلد يحتاج إلى استغلال وتوجيه جهوده المشتركة مجتمعا حتى نتمكن من مواجهة تحدياتنا الوطنية مع التركيز على أهمية عدم الانجرار وراء ما ينشر من معلومات مضللة بالقصد منها إرباك المجتمع والتشكيك في جهوده وبرامجه وحتى في تاريخه الوطني الأخوة الحضور في ختام كلمتي أود أن أؤكد على أمرين فيما يتعلق بموسم عاشور الأمر الأول هو أننا في مملكة البحرين لدينا من الخطباء والرواديد المؤهلين الذين هم على استعداد لتأدية مسؤوليتهم الدينية على الدوام ولذا فإننا لسنا بحاجة إلى أي خطباء أو رواديد من الخارج أما الأمر الثاني هو أن مملكة البحرين ليست وجهة للسياحة الدينية في موسم عاشوراء وأنا سبق أن تحدثت في هذا الأمر مؤكدا على أن ممارسة العزاء هنا هو للمعزين من البحرين مع التأكيد على احترام روحانية المناسبة وخصوصيتها وأن تكون مصلحة الوطن العليا حاضرة المشهد شاكرا لكم جهودكم المباركة وإننا سوف نعمل بإذن الله معا على تنظيم موسم عاشوراء لهذا العام وكل عام وأنتم بخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته For their part, the attendees express thanks and appreciation to the Minister of Interior for his cooperation and dedication to providing all facilities for the success of the Ashura season. They highlighted the cooperation and coordination role of the governorates, stressing the importance of pro promoting ties between members of society. Bahrain's efforts to provide housing to citizens were outlined during a panel discussion session held at the UN headquarters in New York. The Minister of Housing, Amna Ramehi, highlighted the housing finance program and the government land rights program in partnership with the private sector aimed to speed up services for citizens. Ramehi highlighted the development of social housing in Bahrain and the government's efforts to implement the royal directors of His Majesty the King to construct 40,000 housing units. She highlighted the new era in the housing sector in Bahrain represented by the government's tendency to provide immediate housing services to citizens through the housing finance program and the government land rights program and the results achieved by those initiatives that exceeded